another episode of Mighty Mac Week in Review. My name is Sarah Pasternak, joined by my co-host Dave Molinaro, and we're highlighted in red this week in support of the Light the Night Walk this Saturday. Busy week in athletics this week. Let's kick it with men's soccer. They had an interesting week, went on the road, stole a 1-0 win at Rosemont behind a goal from Kyle Jumelon. Look to make it two straight wins as they hosted Keystone. Let's take a look. Jumelon in the first half looking for his second goal of the week as he wins the ball, rips his shot, hits a dinger off the crossbar at 0-0, headed into halftime. In the second half, Mark Stodmeyer went down in the box, not the first time he's done it so far this season, and stepping up to the PK as CSAC Player of the Week, Alex Noel, converts it going upper 90 on the right-hand side for his fourth goal of the season. Eight minutes later, Matt Dunn gets the ball. You gotta love production on the offensive side from the back line. Matt Dunn looking like Jake from State Farm with the assist. Khakis, Alex Noel, upper 90 again with the head. Mighty Max up 2-0. Steve Smith puts the game away in the 64th minute as he outraces the defense and puts the shot far post, trickles its way in for his first goal of the year and another shutout victory for the Mighty Max. Final score three to zero. Joined here in studio by juniors on the Immaculata men's soccer team, the goalie Joe Lebonski and the center back Pat Friend. Guys, thanks for coming on. Of course. So the Mighty Max right now, 3-1 and one in conference, 750 winning percentage. You're in second place. It seems like it's starting to click on the field. Are you yeah. guys starting to feel that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the wins have been really helpful. It's something we really haven't seen in the last few years, but we've been working towards it. So it's good to get a few wins. Mm -hmm. And then the Mighty Max racked up a couple of awards this week. They had the Player of the Week, freshman Alex Noel, and the Defensive Player of the Week, Pat Friend, that back line is really the catalyst of the team. You can tell you guys are working together as a unit. Can you speak to you guys as a back line? Yeah, I mean, we the whole back line consists of uh, four guys that have been playing here together for the past three years. It's uh, me, Corey Burkhart, Aaron Bramble, and Matt Don. And then we got this guy behind us, which gives us a lot more confidence when we're playing. And uh, just from playing for the last three years, like I said, we've just been able to turn our back line into one of the best in the conference, I think. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Twitter for a couple questions from the crowd, and we got one or two here if you guys don't mind. The first one is from Allie Leonard, Allie underscore Leonard. Joe, what does the team really have to focus on with this big game against Marywood tomorrow night? Uh, I think what we have to focus on most is just playing our game. We've done well playing in our system and what we know what to do. So if we continually play how we know how to play, I think we can get a win. Mm -hmm. And then, Pat, this one's for you. It's from Miranda Jones underscore 12. What's your favorite dance move? It's a serious It's a serious question. Oh, man. Favorite dance move. I know you don't celebrate after you score a goal. You're kind of, you know, a big crowd guy. You're a Jeez. hugger. But if you had to hit a dance move, what would it be? Oh, man. Uh... I think it depends on the situation, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could pick one. Uh, we pick one we can't spot. nail him down, but if he scores a home goal sometime in the next week or two, maybe we'll see one. Joe, Pat, thanks for coming on. Thanks Good luck tomorrow us. night at Marywood. Thank, Thank you. And we were just informed defender Pat Friend was also named Mighty Mac of the Week. Congratulations, buddy. The men's soccer team has two games this week, both on the road at Marywood and at Gwena Mercy. Good luck, guys. On to women's soccer. The girls hosted Notre Dame last Wednesday. Let's take a look at the highlights. Trailing 1-0 in the first half, Erica Buckley collects a loose ball and races towards the cage. She rips a shot, but the keeper deflects it away to keep the max trailing 1-0 heading into the locker room. In the second half, IU continues to keep the pressure on as Elizabeth Duda sends a great pass across the box for Rachel Lamb, but her shot sails high. Now trailing 2-0, the Max are threatening again as Rosemary Wright collects the loose ball and fires it at the net, but Notre Dame defender sends it away. IU will lose 2-0, but they bounce back with a 5-0 win over Cedar Crest on Saturday. Joined here today by Morgan McDonough, a freshman on the Immaculata women's soccer team. Morgan, thanks for coming in. Welcome. Thanks for so the Mighty Max had a tough out-of-conference schedule. Right now, 3-8-1 overall. But in conference, we're 500, 3-3, and and we're tied for a sixth place, which is the final spot in the playoffs. Is the team starting to get nervous, or are you rallying together with five games left? 
Um, I think the team is more excited than nervous. We know that we have a lot of potential and starting in the beginning of the season, as you said, it was a little rough. So we know our potential and we're really trying to push for that to show the potential that we have, which I think we did a good job in the last game. So I think we're getting pumped, not really nervous, just want to get it. Gearing up for this final push. Yeah, as you mentioned, the last game, big road win, conference game at Cedar Crest. Came away with a 5 nothing victory. Erica Buckley scored. Carly Meraki scored twice. And you as well scored two goals, the first of your c career. Congratulations. Can you tell us how those goals developed and then how it felt scoring your first career goal? So Carly got the first two goals. The first one, she just kind of, it was a long ball, touched by, went in. Same with the second. She beat a couple defenders. It was, she shot it from pretty far out, far corner. Um, and then right after that, um, I got my first one. It was off of Carrie Quigley's corner kick. It was bouncing around in the box. A defender kind of touched it back, and I just got my foot on it, and it bounced in. It was my first goal ever. Um, I was really excited. It's a really good feeling, especially when you have a lot of opportunities and you don't get them in. So, And then after that, the half ended. We went into halftime up 3-0. Right away in the second half, a lot of push. Um, we got the ball in the midfield. Emily played a slot ball through, and it was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and I just touched the buyer. And then not far after that, Erica basically did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that ended up with a big 5-0 conference victory. And I mentioned it to you before off camera, and it's evident to people who've watched the games that you're right on the cusp, and once you – put one in finally, the floodgates are going to open. So hopefully the rest of the season we'll see some more goals. The Mighty Max have six games left, five conference games, as I said, getting ready for that playoff push. Good luck the rest of the season. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. The men's and women's cross-country teams competed at the Blue and Gold Invite on Del at Delaware on Saturday, and both had great showings. The women's team finished fourth in their competition, led by Diana Kusick in 26th place. The men placed third behind two Division I schools, led by a 17th place finish from CSAC Runner of the Week, Angel Jamal Rodriguez. The field hockey team took a road loss at Marywood earlier last week, but looked to bounce back hosting Gwinnett Mercy. Here are the highlights. Early in the game, Sarah Pasternak makes one of her seven saves on this side angle shot as she gets a piece of it to deflect the ball wide. Later in the half, Patsy Murphy heads up the left side and centers the ball, and Brooke Robinson gets a stick on it, but it goes just over the cage. With time winding down, Patsy Murphy has what appears to be the Mighty Max first goal on the day, but it was called off, and the Max would fall to the Griffins by final score of 7-0. The women's tennis team went 2-2 two two in a busy week with four matches. They collected victories over Notre Dame and Rutgers Camden while falling to Gwen and Mercy in Alvernia. They will play three CSAC matches this week, looking to improve on their 5-2 conference record, including home events on Friday and Saturday as they close out the regular season and look to clinch a third straight playoff berth. The IU volleyball team remained unbeaten in CSAC play with big wins over Gwen and Mercy and Summit last week. They hosted Penn State Abington on Thursday. Let's take a look at the highlights. The Mighty Max got started quickly as reigning CSAC Player of the Week and current CSAC of the Week honor roll member Gabby Guerrera hits this little drop shot to put the Mighty Max in front early in the first set. Last week, Miranda Jones was honored into the 1,000th assist club. This week, she's at it again with this assist, one of her 42 on the day to set up Shelby Belk, who finishes off one of her 10 kills in a 25-18 first set win. After winning the second set 25-15, the Max were eyeing a sweep in the third set and Arden Vizar delivers one of her match-high 14 kills to put the Mighty Max up early in the set. It's the first time I'm using it this year. There is no column in the stat sheet for hustle plays. Allie Leonard from the back line, sacrifices the body, comes up with this dig. Miranda Jones eventually gets the point the Mighty Max go on to sweep the Nittany Lions. The Mac Volleyball players will be against also undefeated team Cabrini on Wednesday before they host Centenary on Saturday. Good luck, girls. The Mighty Mac golf team played in the Stevenson Fall Invitational on Saturday afternoon and compiled a total score of 363. Aaron Harper led the way with an 85 and Colin Davis followed behind with an 86. The Max will be back in action this afternoon at the Alvernia Invitational. 
Busy day on campus Saturday, women's tennis at 1 o'clock, the volleyball team's inside Alumni Hall also at 1 o'clock, and the women's soccer team out at Draper Wall Stadium. Take a guess, 1 o'clock. Also on Saturday, the Immaculata community will be participating in the Light the Night Walk at Wilson Farm Park at, in the evening. If you'd like to register for the team to walk or if you'd like to donate to the Immaculata team, look out for links on our video. There's a busy week, all week, home and away, so we want to wish good luck to all the teams participating this week. My name's Dave Monero. And I'm Sarah Pasternak. And, and go, go Mass. Mass.